Hello there, my name's Michael Maynard. What you're looking at in front of you there is a whole bunch of tension tools. Now, this video started out being planned in my head as a very simple review of the Mad Bob six piece pry bar set. I bought these a few months ago and I've been getting emails every couple of weeks from Mad Bob's place saying, Would I please review these things? And I thought I'd better get around and do that. But the more I thought about this video and the review, the more complex it got because in order to review these things properly, we've got to compare them against something and also we've got to have a good understanding of tension and what it actually does. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is splitting this video into a couple of different parts. I think this is going to be a two-part thing. We are going to talk about tensioning a lock for a start why we have to do it and how we have to do it. Then we'll talk about the individual tension wrench sets that we've got here and then we'll pick a lock and uh, and we'll kind of do a worked example. So listen, the first thing we need to talk about is why you want a tension a lock. Now a tension wrench has got one job and one job only and that is the transmission of force, the transmission of energy. So the energy is going in two directions. What we want to be doing here is transmitting, not tension actually, that's the wrong word to use. What we're actually doing is transferring rotational force, we're transferring torque into the core of this lock. So I'm just going to grab one of these things at random, stick it in there. That, that's a horrible tension wrench incidentally, but we'll come to that later. We push like that, and what we're doing here is pushing round an axis of rotation. We're providing torque into that lock. We're putting energy into that system. Now, that's our first job. So we've got energy going from here down into the lock. Now, the second thing that's going to be happening here is that the lock is going to be giving us feedback back up through here. Now, if you can't feel what's going on on this thing, you don't know what's going on inside that lock. So what you want here is a reasonable amount of energy being put into the system so that when you're picking these pins, the pins give you some feedback on here and the more energy you're putting in here, the more feedback you're going to be getting out there. It is as simple as that. Now that is why I have a little bit of an issue with the advice that new lock pickers get given all the time, which is to use the lightest possible tension. So, you know, I, I remember years ago reading a thing that said you want to have just enough tension on your finger there, just enough pressure, so that if there was an ant on the tension wrench, you'd hold him in place, but you wouldn't squash him. Now guys, that look... That may be necessary for one or two very specific locks, okay, but in general, that is bad advice. There is always a range of tensions over which you can tension a lock to pick it, and what I prefer to be doing is working at the top end of that range so that the feedback that you're getting through your finger is unmistakable. So there's your first bit of advice, guys, if you're looking for some. You can try feather light tension if you want, but 99% of the time that is not necessary and more tension within certain bounds is better than less. You don't want to have so much tension on there that everything binds up and you, you can't move a pin, but there's an acceptable range of tension and you want to be at the top end of it. Now, that brings me to my next question. What kind of a tool do we want to be applying that force with? So what kind of a material is going to work best to take the energy from my finger down into this lock and then the feedback from the lock back up to my finger? Now, we need to do a thought experiment here. We're going to think about this. I find that when I'm trying to think through a problem, I like to take two complete opposite ends of the spectrum so I can work out what's what's most likely to work. Now... You can see my little piece of pasta here. He's a little little teddy bear pasta. He's there for two reasons. Number one, he's a placeholder because I've loaned out one of the um, 
one of the bars from this tension wrench kit and that's kind of a placeholder for it. But number two, it's because I want to think about tensioning this lock with a piece of spaghetti. Now, let's say we got a freshly boiled piece of spaghetti. It's the floppiest thing you've ever seen. You stick it in that lock and you try and tension it. Now, what's going to happen? I leave that to your imagination. On the other end of the spectrum, let's think about a completely imaginary material and we're going to call it kryptonite okay now kryptonite has some cool properties it is infinitely light it is infinitely strong so it's very light and, and a very stiff material it magically can be bent to any shape we like and it also magically sticks like concrete to whatever surface we apply it to until we decide that we don't want it applied there anymore and then it comes straight off. Now, what would you rather tension your lock with, guys? Would you rather tension it with a wet noodle or would you rather tension it with some uh, non-existent, let's face it, material that transmits energy perfectly both in one direction and the other and never moves around and never slips it's 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 locked in place I know what I'd rather have guys I would rather have the kryptonite and that brings me on to now comparing these sets of gear so what have we got in front of us we have got three tension wrench sets this is the mad bob set we have got one two three four five six different tension tools here there are the curved ones and there are the dead straight ones we'll talk about those in a minute here we have got four fifths of the sparrows flat tension bar set and then on this side here we've got all four of sparrows comb bar set now I just want to cover the comb bar set quickly I hate it I think it's a rubbishy bit of gear. It's as simple as that. Sparrows are by far my favourite pick makers. So as I'm sure you guys all know, I reckon that the Sparrows short hook in 25 thousandths and 15 15 thousandths are the best hooks you can get. There's no question about that, in, in my mind anyway. But they do make some stuff that is just pretty gimmicky, you know, that Chaos card for example, no one needs that thing, you know. And honestly, I think these chrome, uh, these these comb sets, are, they kind of fall into that category. None of these things is any use to man or beast. The only even remotely useful pick is this one here because it has a thing on the top there to tension tubular locks okay and I think that's a really good idea but they do have a separate pick that does that called the Mantis which costs all of five bucks Canadian uh, you saw me put this in a lock just before the problem with this is that there is such a huge distance between here and here that you're applying all kinds of sideways forces as opposed to rotational ones and the thing just often falls straight out so I don't like these things and I don't like these comb things on the bottom end either I think they're just a gimmick look if you know how to pick a lock you don't need these stupid combs so let's take these right out of the equation those things are on the Sparrows website for 1750 Canadian that's about 13 bucks US or about 20 bucks Kiwi dollars you don't need them you don't need to be paying that so that's out of the equation now what do we got next we have got a better set still not perfect actually but it's but it's better than that other thing from Sparrows this is called the flat tension bar set it sells for 12 bucks Canadian which is nine bucks US and about 13 bucks New Zealand dollars now with this one guys we're getting better okay we're on the right track there are five tools in the set most of them have these little dog tooth things on the end of them I don't know if you can see that well enough on this video I'm sorry if that doesn't come out but um, there are little serrations 
on the end of this thing to hold it in the lock and honestly I think that's a pretty good feature okay now the issue that I do have with these they come in three different thicknesses you get two at 25 thousandths two at 32 thousandths and one at 40 thousandths so a thicker one that's just on one millimeter thick and that one is by far the most useful tension wrench in the whole set and unfortunately I've loaned it out to somebody because they needed a wrench and I had one so um, the one that I don't have sitting here is the best one of the lot because it's a stiffer tension wrench and so it, it transmits that force better it's as simple as that now with that said there are times when a thinner tension wrench is a good idea there are some keyways that you're just not gonna get a thicker tension wrench into now this is a lock that I struggled with for a while it's actually a very simple lock it is a five pin euro there are two spools in that thing so it's not a difficult lock to pick but I really struggled with keyway control on this thing and um, the reason for that was that even though this thing here is pretty narrow you tension it from the top about the only thing you can get in there is one of these things a real thin so this is the 25 thousandth one that's about the only thing that fits in there and even using that trying to pick it you lose control of the keyway when you're trying to set the, the spools and it, it was just horrible I ended up picking this with bottom of the keyway tension which is a thing I hate doing so what do I think of these the sparrows ones they're okay for what they are they're better than their comb kit I think that's a that's a useless thing but they're still not perfect and that brings me on to mad bob set that's the real purpose of this video so what do we got we've got a lovely blue case now um, I'm real sorry mad bob but I don't pick locks with cases so that's out of the picture I don't know what I paid for that and I don't care it's well made okay they use obviously the same contract manufacturer they use to make their other cases this is the ghost pro kit I believe it's called so pretty clearly made made by the same crowd but I don't care all right that doesn't get me into a into a lock what gets me into a lock is tension applied intelligently and that's where we come to these things now these ones are available in three different thicknesses there is the 1.2 mil the 1.0 mil and the 0.8 of a mil so in imperial measurements the 1.2 is 47 thousandths the 1 mil one here in my left hand is 39 thousandths and then the skinny 0.8 one is 31 thousandths now for my money that the 1.2 301 stainless steel mad bob tension wrench is the one to have and frankly I paid $29 New Zealand so about 16 pounds and that's about 21 bucks US for me this tension wrench here is the one I bought now those ones maybe have their place I've never actually used them uh, because if I'm going to use a tension wrench and get it into a, even a reasonably sized keyway the thickest one I can possibly use is going to be the one that I go for so that there is the go-to wrench for me now I want to say a word about these things here these curved ones I do not pick padlocks in my hand I, I just can't see the point in it okay guys if if I wanted to do that maybe these things were a good idea and I, I'm talking to guys that use them I believe that they do work very well certainly ergonomically they feel good in your hand but for me it's something I just don't do it's just something I never never do so for my money these three things were a little bit of a waste of time and beautifully made though they are beautifully finished and and lovely as as they are 
I don't need them. And if I was Mad Bob, what I would be doing is putting these in a different kit. I would actually sell the flat bars and the curved bars separately. So this is the end of part one of the video. What I've done here so far is given you a brief overview of tension and how it works, a brief overview of the Mad Bob stuff and the Sparrow stuff. What we're going to do in the second part of the video is actually use these things, stick them in a few locks and see how they look. So we'll be back in a minute.